Hello, welcome to Sky Sweaty Record Review, episode 193, the only first listen new music review show hosted by a French professor immediately after leaving the YMCA. So, uh, I'm going to be reviewing an album called First Timer by Pizza Girl. Now, Pizza Girl is neither a pizza nor a girl. Um, it's a young man uh, from Liverpool, England. And it's interesting because the last album I reviewed, Hypervigilant by Stephen A. Clark, even though that was by an African-American dude from Miami, these are very similar records. I could have done one of those head-to-head -head battles that I do that nobody likes or watches, um, but I decided to split them up. But in both cases, we have very personal records performed by young men who are recording everything all by themselves. But this is really quite different. This isn't very much like Stephen A. Clark, uh, which is much more sort of a focused, uh, tortured internal dialogue, whereas this, well, we'll get into what this is. Um, while I went to the gym with my wife today, and uh, I was sort of trying to figure out what I was going to review, either this or Kim Gordon, which I'll review tomorrow, and, uh, and I, I was saying that I liked it, and that I was surprised that I liked it, and she said that she was surprised, and she was surprised that I was surprised. Like, what is there not to like about it? And what I realized is that before I did this show, um, I would often hear music and just sort of say, yeah, I know what that is. I, I get it. So I would have heard this. I would have heard a song like the opening track, Ball's Gonna Keep On Rollin', and I would have dismissed it. So I'll play it for you, and I'll let you know exactly how I would have dismissed it before I started taking new music more seriously. Eh, all right, I get it. 80s. You know, you got the 80s keyboard and sounds and drum machine. All right, I get it. He's like singing kind of like a Halls and Oats thing. All right, that's good. I'm not going to review it. I'm not going to listen to it. That's what I would have said. But I kept listening. And I'm really glad that I did because this is really actually quite a good record. All those sort of complaints or dismissive comments are, are fairly apt. Okay, I mean, for the most part, this album is a very 80s drenched pop record. And I don't really know what's happening. Like, I don't know how it is. There's so many albums that come out that are indie that sound like mainstream music from 30 years ago. I don't understand, like, how that's happening, what the, what the cultural moment is. You know, it'd, it'd be like if, if in the 80s there was a lot of music that, if like the Stray Cats, Right? If there were like like hundreds of bands trying to sound like Buddy Holly in the 80s. That's kind of like what we have now. But it's really good. I think part of the reason that it's so good is that um, it allows these musicians to make personal music that uses these kinds of tropes of the 80s, you know, like kind of cheesy guitars, kind of cheesy keyboards, to make things fairly easily on their computer and express themselves very quickly in a very palatable way, in not a very challenging way. So this opening track is like that. It's sort of like a story song. Oh, I hit the plant. Sorry, plant. Um, uh, it's kind of like a story song about someone becoming famous, sort of like a existential crisis light. Like it's about this person who's sort of going through life and figuring out who they are and, and what it means to be successful. Um, but that was interesting. And then the next track comes Day Trip. And this is another one of these light, kind of catchy songs. I'm gonna play it too, just because I feel like it. So just get a sense again. Now this is a habit that he has of following the melody that's played on guitar or keyboard with his voice. But it's this really nice catchy song about going on a day trip, which I don't think is like a day trip like Take Acid. I can't tell, maybe it is. Tell me in the comments if I'm wrong. Um, but it's, it's, you know, just a song about, you know, taking a day trip sort of in your mind, kind of, okay, boy, maybe that is drugs, I don't know. But sort of like taking a day trip in your mind, not having to go anywhere and giving yourself a break. And the, the way that the melody is played makes me think that it's actually just sort of day tripper by the Beatles, but just sort of truncated, like as opposed to down, ba 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 na 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 it's this. It's a really catchy, catchy album. Lots of great songs like that. So, you know, at this point, 
after listening to the first song, I, I was really in. And then the second track confirmed that. And then Body Biology, the third track, is where it gets really good. This is where it sort of takes a step above, where it really earns its... It goes beyond just a pastiche of 80s sounds and themes. And this has got this great chorus, uh, great echoing of guitar and melody. Um, he's very anti-polyphony, <laughs> you know, it's very much just like one melody goes through. Um, but it's this really kind of sweet song. I might just play it too. I might just go through the whole damn album. Well, okay, not the whole album. Um, but it's a little bit more, almost like, reminds me a little bit more of Devo. So as opposed to kind of like the Hall and Oates of the 80s, it's a little bit more like kind of funny and kind of catchy. Um, I'll, I'll kind of skip ahead on this one. Can I skip ahead here? I don't even know how to do this on my computer. How do I skip ahead? Why am I so old? What's going on here? Okay, well, doesn't matter. Point is, uh, this is where it develops a lot more. And that falls to the next track, Dennis, which is very nicely put together. It appears to be a song about being jealous of somebody dating an, a much older guy. He's really old, he's 43. <laughs> I'm 42, so that, that dude must be really old. It's at this point on the record where I realized, I don't, I don't know if he's singing about, you know, about like, about men or, or women. Um, this is very much one of these kind of post-sexuality records. Part of what drew me to it was the cover, uh, which I just find to be kind of funny and interesting, because uh, it's this guy, you know, who's wearing makeup, and then he's got this little two-pound weight, which is very much in the style of the 80s. Um, and I don't know. I, don't, I really don't think it matters, his sexuality or who he's singing about. Um, but something about that cover I just found funny. Maybe just those two pound weights. I, I just, I so associate that with growing up in the 80s and seeing like, you know, LA gear commercials and, you know, people working out and, and, and so there you go. So it doesn't matter. What does matter is that this is a good song about a young man being jealous of an old man, which I remember happening and I think it's really well written and it's very, it's interesting because I can't tell if this guy ever leaves his bedroom. Like, I can't tell if this guy lives in Liverpool and just writes everything in his bedroom and imagines. You know, the first track, he talks about going to Broadway. This one, he talks about being in Venice, you know, California. Or if he's some guy that moved to the States and is trying to make it and going to Coffee Bean and, and writing his songs while thinking about these things. It's really hard to tell. It's a very imaginative record, actually, because it's romantic. That's what this album is. It's romantic. Not in the sense of, like you know, oh, or anything like that. It's romantic, sorry, I'm just figuring this out. Seven minutes in, I finally figured out how I'm gonna review this record. It's okay. Um, you know, romantic in the sense of like imagining a different life and imagining a whole series of things that might happen that, that are filled with sort of drama and adventure and excitement from somebody who potentially doesn't live any of it, just kind of sits alone and records this music all by himself. Um, so you have that, looking at it now, you know, the, the opening track, he has this romantic vision uh, of, of, uh, of being a movie star. You know, Day Trip, it's the, the romantic daydreams of getting to go to America and getting to go to the beach when you're actually just at your job. Um, and then a track like Library, which is one of the more heartfelt tracks, which is like falling in love with somebody at the library, which is sort of like one of my recurring romantic fantasies, right? That you're just gonna like walk into the library and see somebody and, and I'm smart and you're smart and let's go escape the world together and, and make sweet library love. I, I don't know, but this is definitely a fantasy that I've had in the past. And this kind of song is pretty much just a straight recounting of that idea. You know, it's not like turning it on its head. I don't think he's trying to subvert romantic expectations. He's just making a delightfully romantic album. Um, it takes a little bit of a dark turn with the track This Party Sucks, uh, which fits into the great Northern English tradition of songs about parties not being fun, kind of the house soon is now. Uh, a, little bit, a little bit of a darker song. Um, and because, you know, he keeps on saying, you know, I'm not enough. So this party sucks, I'm not enough. So there are little, in the middle of this sort of romantic 80s, breezy, pastoral, not pastoral, but, but breezy 
album, there are these little dark moments that pop up and they make it quite nice. Like this, like saying I'm never enough. And then my favorite track on the record, uh, Cut and Paste. Now this is my favorite track, partly because it's so different from the rest. It immediately follows Ugly, which is the point where I'm like, all right, I'm done, I'm done with this. I'm done with this guy. This is cool. I've liked it, but uh, you need to do something else. I can't listen to 40 minutes of all of the same kind of stuff. But then cut and paste at the end kind of opens up a window onto a different possibility for what Pizza Girl might be able to do. I'm sorry, I just have to say it that way. It's such a good name, Pizza Girl. Um, so cut and paste is great because he allows some distortion in. His voice gets kind of warped, has more of a vapor wavy sound to it. Um, you know, all of this, all this whole album has so many like keyboard sounds and like the guitar sounds are usually very consciously 80s sounding guitar, sort of like, if you know what I mean, like a Stratocaster with no distortion, you know, just very kind of tight played, like on Library, you know. He throws in all these 80s tropes and they all work, but on Cut and Paste, he moves a little bit more modern. Um, he has some like arpeggiated keyboards going on and it's definitely the most emotionally harrowing. Um, you know, I'm just gonna play you a little bit of it so you, you can see the, the evolution that I'm talking about. But I've, I've gotta figure out a way to cut, to go forward. Okay, good. I feel like Michael Bluth. You hear how that's like, we're not still in the 80s here. He's kind of moved us out into a more interesting place. And actually, I would even actually say that this is an emo song, because the lyrics are very, very emo. It's all about like his family like wanting to cut him down, his, his friends wanting to cut him down. And, and my favorite bit is he just keeps on saying, I know, and then following it up with, I want to know. And that's just great. That, that's just a great way of feeling where you, often when you're in a state of emotional distress, you both feel that you understand something and that you want to understand something at the same time. Great emotional complexity. You're gonna to have to cut that. You know what? You just saw, you probably just saw a little cut right there. That's because I'm just afraid of getting copyright struck for playing too much of the same album. I'll just say that I really like this. Um, my daughter's been talking about uh, putting makeup on me for quite a bit. She's really into the idea of, of putting, I think, mascara or eyeliner. So. You know, Pizza Girl showing me that, you know, it's a good look. I might be able to pull it off. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll record an episode like that. Who knows? All right, well, that's that. Another, the second album in a row. You know, again, I, this show is about, is there any good music out there? And there is, and here's just two good examples of people that you maybe never would have heard of, you never would have listened to, and they're just two guys on different sides of the world with different experiences, recounting different things, alone in their rooms, making great music. All right, so for Pizza Girl, for the Sith Trooper, there's the camera.